The Herald Standard presents the game of the week tonight. The Carmichael's Mighty Mikes visit the Frasier Commodores. The Mighty Mikes bat first and turn over possession immediately with a fourth down conversion failure. But Frazier shows off their passing strengths on first down. Quarterback Julian Muccioli to Colton Arison. On the next play, Julian runs the ball for a gain, but nearly turns it over. Frazier gets off easy this time. And their first drive leads to seven. Arison with the catch and run. It's Carmichael's turn for a big game. Bailey Jones. But a holding call wipes it away in this drive stalls. After the punt, Frazier faces third and four. The Mikes shut them down. In the second, Frazier again. A handoff and a long run around the right side by Shane McGavitt moves the Commodores into the red zone. And Muccioli keeps the ball and then loses the ball. Carmichaels comes up with it. Billy Piper takes the snap and laterals to quarterback Kevin Kelly, who decides to keep it and finds a seam that leads all the way down the field, almost to the end zone. Julian Muccioli with the tackle. Kelly fakes a pitch to Piper. Hands off to Bailey Jones, who runs it into the end zone. And after Kelly fights for the conversion, the Mikes have a one-point lead. After receiving the kickoff on first down, Muccioli passes to Kenny Fine for a touchdown catch and run. And Frazier takes back the lead. And the Commodores would have one more possession as the clock ticks down to halftime. A dropped pass brings Shane McGavitt to the field for a last second field goal. In the second half, Frazier continues to drive. Shane, one more time. And one more time by Muccioli in the fourth. Closes this thing out. Frazier 30, Carmichael 8. Hi, this is Robert Chaney here in the Herald Standard Game of the Week. Frazier defeats Carmichael's 30 to 8. And uh, Mike Steber with me here. Mike, just a, a, a solid game. Uh, you grind it out. You had a couple of long drives. And now you're, you're set up now where next week means the playoff. Yeah, I uh, couldn't ask for anything more than uh, going to next week with a chance to make the playoffs. Um, you know, good best center team uh, next week, of course. Uh, but, you know, at this point in the year, if, if you still have that in your sights, um, you know, that, that's a that's a goal that's still on the table. So proud of our kids for coming out here tonight, making that happen tonight. You know, our line really took control of the line of scrimmage there in the second half. Um, I thought the key, one of the keys was uh, the long drives. Like at the end of the first half, I thought the sign of a well-coached team is the way you guys went down the field and you, you ran up, you ate up the whole clock, you took a shot at the end, and you left just enough time to get a field goal, and you made it a two score game. How big was that drive? Yeah, a huge field goal at the end of that first half, especially with their big two point conversion. You know, they they, uh, they capitalized on a turnover, had a big run, and put two points uh, two, two points on the board, too, to, to, to get that eight points. And um, that field goal was absolutely critical. So proud of our team for executing that, and Shane McGavin. I mean, Gavin had a good game on the ground too. He did, yeah, yeah. Running, uh, you know, running from the fullback position and the tailback position, ran very hard. You know, no, uh, our Bulls up front really, uh, like I said, uh, real proud of them, especially in that second half to get that clock down and get out of here with a win before this rain came in. Yeah, that, that's the other thing was uh, I think at the end of the third quarter, into the fourth quarter, it's still a two-score game, and you go on. A, I think it was a 17-play drive or something like that, 14-play, ate up almost eight minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Again, like. Uh, you know, it just. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's what we needed to do, and our team executed it well. Uh, you know, very proud of our guys. Uh, really, each of them contributed. You know, when you look down the stat sheet, I think you'll see them all. Uh, you know, and it's uh, and it starts up front. So just proud of the team effort here tonight. Defense stepped up in the second half. They made that big play in the first half, was set up that score, but defense really, uh, really tightened up in the second half and made it happen. Uh, Julian did a good job. You had some good balance too. Julian did a good job throwing the ball when you had to. He did. Yeah, he's been very efficient. 
uh, throwing a football. You know, good completion percentage, and, and you know, had a we had a we had a slip there on the one. You know, um, right, the yeah, throw, yeah, yeah, that's that's a tough thing on 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 this field. You're going to have that. You know, so I uh, can't fault him for that. But he bounced back well and led our team, uh, you know, very well here tonight. Okay, well, good luck against Best Center next week. Got the winner goes to the playoffs. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right. You know, we struggled to get first downs. Um, they got first downs, and uh, you know it's, it's one of those deals where, uh, you know, unfortunately you're on the wrong end of it. But you know, such is life. Um, I thought the score wasn't really indicative of the game, and I, I thought you got the, the packages you had with Kelly, where you would pitch out, he would throw us, and those you would run. You were pretty crazy. Is that stuff you just put in, or he seems like he's gotten better as the season's going. Yeah, we've on. done that in the past, um, last year with him, but we didn't do it this year. Um, you know, earlier in the season, we would get in the gun and, and snap the ball back, but we just had too many bad snaps. So um, we played it safer where we, we got a receiver under there and would pitch it to him. And, um, you know, we lose a receiver on the edge, but we're still able to get it to him. And, you know, we have a higher percentage chance of getting Kevin the ball than he has the, the option to run or pass. So, uh, you know, although it was new for this year, it's not, not anything new for us as an offense. Um, probably something we should have had in from the very get-go but uh, yeah he, he's a good football player um, he's finally I'm not gonna say he's totally healthy but he's the healthiest he's been this season and uh, you know it's evident out there you know he makes some really nice plays with his feet and uh, he can throw the ball around a little bit too I guess I, was, I thought Shaw played a really good game yeah yeah he's, he's, he's really come along these past couple weeks um, you know I think he's starting to understand that you know he doesn't have time afforded to him you know next week's his, his last week of playing high school football so um, I really think he's trying to take advantage uh, of the reps he gets and the snaps he gets out there well I know it's uh, the tough season one win but I thought your team's played hard all year and, and still playing hard now and you got Brownsville next week yeah um, you know there, there's no quitting these guys you know um, I think it's a it's a testament to our kids and our coaches for keeping this thing together. You know, I, I've heard horror stories over the years where uh, things start going south and everybody abandons ship, and you know, it, it, it's it's total chaos within the program. But you know, our our, our kids, um, you know, know the plan, follow the plan, execute the plan to to the best of their ability. Um, you know, and it's just one of those things where it's not working out for us. And, you know, in the off season, we'll have a lot of time to evaluate everything as we will. And um, we'll get better from it because we have to. And, uh, you know, we'll get our guys ready to, to finish up 2018 next week. All right. Thank you, Ron. Okay, Appreciate thank you. it. Uh, no problem. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah.